This is a 1.6 scale 1981 DeLorean DMC-12, modified to look like the time machine from Back to the Future. I have a couple of these in different sizes, but I really like what they did with this model. It's got the flux capacitor, lights, and working doors. It's great. Although, I'm guessing you probably want to see the one in the background. Now, with the real thing, there's always something. In this case, I've got one door that's sagging a bit. I'll get into that. This video is about some of the things I've learned owning a DeLorean. It's both a privilege and an honor. First things first, where's the gas cap? This thing runs on gas, right? Well, I'm glad you asked. This sucker's only partially electrical. It has a regular car battery and it does run on gasoline. Premium gas only, however. The gas cap can be found under the hood, which is also technically a frunk since the engine is in the back. Like most other cars, there is a lever underneath the steering column on the left. With the hood popped open, you can lift it up and you'll find the gas cap pointing straight up on the driver's side. You can't exactly be subtle when putting gas in this car because you've got a giant sheet of stainless steel up in the air like this. It's pretty entertaining, but uh, you can expect to get some questions and some, some folks saying hello. It's also highly recommended you use high octane gas in this car, 91 or 93 if you can get it. When I first got this car, I noticed that the steering column was sitting really low. And of course, it turns out there's a mechanical way to adjust this. There's a little knob underneath and you have to feel and kind of find where it is. You loosen, make your adjustments and tighten it back up. I have had a problem with the steering column slipping over time. I'm concerned that I'm going to over tighten that little screw, so I need to be careful. So this car has a custom speedometer. What you see goes up to 140 miles per hour. The original DeLorean speedometer only indicated up to 85 miles per hour. And of course, for Back to the Future fans, this is simply unacceptable. Allegedly, this was a President Carter administration era thing. They really didn't want people speeding. Vehicle speedometers were supposed to have 55 miles per hour bolded and not have the ability to indicate speeds higher than 85 miles per hour. So Carter started this plan, Nixon had some proposals, and it was President Gerald Ford who signed it into law in 1975. This is the so-called National Maximum Speed Law. Today, the highest posted speed limit in the U.S. is 85 miles an hour on the Texas State Highway 130. So technically, going 88 would be speeding everywhere in the U.S. So long story short, I had this speedometer replaced with a piece of card that goes up to 140. Plenty of room to grow. And then the DeLorean Midwest team presumably had to recalibrate the mechanical bits so the speedometer needle points to the right place. Kind of an important detail there. Adding to the particular nature of this car, there's a recommended way to close the doors from both the outside and the inside. From what I've heard, this method is recommended to help reduce wear and tear on the door. You pull downward, switch to your other hand, pull down and in, and then put your other arm on the armrest of the door, and then bring your arm down. To release, use two fingers, pull up on the little tab, kind of like you're opening a pop can. And the door should take it from there. I want to point out as well, there is a lock doors indicator that illuminates when you have the doors closed, but not locked. And I believe in the DeLorean manual, they say you should be driving with the doors locked. I think this is done so that there's a reduced chance of the doors opening during driving and or for mechanical stability. One thing I still have yet to do is to properly set the clock in the DeLorean. Now, this is sort of funny because you think you're in a time machine. What's the important thing? Time. Uh, but at least it's not blinking 12 o'clock like a VCR or something. So, you know, one step at a time. There's also a recommended way to close the door from the outside. So again, you'll use the pull tab. 
Pull straight down as much as you can with one hand. With your other hand, place the flat section of your hand against the rear window sill above the keyhole on the door. So again, use the pull tab, pull down, hand on the window sill for the last mile. To open the door, simply lift the handle and the door will do the rest. There's no need to pull up, just release the handle. Okay, time to go a little more in depth on the doors. The DeLorean is known for its elegant gull wing door design. The DeLorean is not the first to have this, but it's definitely recognized as part of its iconic style. What they may not also tell you is the doors are somewhat finicky. There's an interesting, again, 1980s mechanical approach to these doors, and they do require tweaks and maintenance. They can be affected by cold weather, misuse, all sorts of things. There's a cryogenically set torsion bar that runs alongside the frame and a gas charge strut that holds the door as it lifts. As I understand it, it seems straightforward, but there's a fine balance of physics at play. Each door can weigh over 100 pounds, so there's some heavy lifting going on. This is just one of the challenges with this elegant, but particular design. A common question is, how do you keep all that stainless steel looking nice? Just like your stainless steel appliances, this thing can collect a lot of fingerprints in a hurry. First thing, never use steel wool pads or anything abrasive. Only use soft materials and buff by hand. I also recommend going with the grain of the steel. I believe this is from back to front. The original DeLorean manual actually recommended using a rag dipped in gasoline for cleaning the stainless steel panels of the car. Ah, the 1980s. When burgers came in styrofoam containers you could throw out the side, and gasoline was both inexpensive and considered harmless. Boy, times have changed. These days, DeLorean owners have all sorts of personal favorite methods they use to clean the panels of their cars. From what I tried, I've had some pretty good results just using stainless steel appliance wipes. The kind made for your kitchen fridge at home. There are no nasty chemical disclaimers, hazard or health warning labels, and it doesn't leave an obvious residue. My only complaint is it does leave a bit of a funny, sweet, soapy smell in your hands. You could probably avoid this by wearing gloves. You might wonder what this car sounds like. I think it sounds pretty good, but I am by no means a car expert. This car has the stock PRV, Peugeot Renault Volvo engine, with the Stage 2 performance upgrade. As a result, Rather than the stock 130 horsepower, it is somewhere between 180 to 200 horsepower. I believe the automatic is more the 180 range. It's not exactly a sports car with the added 500 pounds of weight estimated from the various Back to the Future props, but it sure looks stylish. And I have yet to hear a single complaint. I want to state for the record this really did take three attempts to start, and I'm going to blame it on the cold weather and the fact that I might be running the battery a little low here. But it's not uncommon for a DeLorean to not start on the first time. Owning this car has been a great privilege, and it is an honor to be able to share that with people on the street. Just driving around and surprising, bringing joy and delight to strangers whenever you turn a corner, I'm telling you, it's a good time, and it has yet to get old. <laughs>